Hey guys, so I'm really going for that spa-like feeling, aren't I? And remember how I said I was probably going to close down my Patreon? Well, I don't seem to be doing that. I don't know. Maybe I won't. I'm kind of enjoying it right now, so I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it as is for the time being. But today I decided to make um kind of I've been making a couple of new series where I can just add videos that aren't just a direct repaint video, but you know, something else. So I decided if I ever had hairstyles that I needed to do, I could do a separate video just on hairstyling. So that's how this one came to be. I'd already done the repaint. It was done. And, um, I just decided it'd be kind of fun to do it this way. So this haircut basically is going to be an 80s version of maybe a Veronica Lake. That's sort of what I'm looking for somewhat. And the first thing I want to do is cut the hair, cut some of the bulk out. Um, first what I do is I pull it forward and I find my guideline, like how long I want the bang area to be. And I knew I wanted it to kind of flip back. And then I take the sides and I just pull it forward Make sure I find my guideline there that I did on the front. And then I do a slanted, um, if that's the right, diagonal cut. So that I don't lose the length of the hair, but I kind of balance out the whole head, if that makes sense, to make sure that, that it's even all the way throughout. Plus, like I said, I get rid of some of the bulk. So I pull all the hair forward, one side and then the other side, and I just cut it in the front. And then what I do is I pull it forward once I have that all done and I'm going to pull the top part up. I'm going to fix my camera in just a second here, but I'm going to pull the top part up and then I'm just going to take a little bit of the bulk out of the middle section only. Um, you want to be careful about pulling it um, all the way up from the sides up because then you're going to get kind of choppy and you don't want that. That's why I do the diagonal so I don't get choppy. So the next section after I cut the hair is going to be to roll it. And I use um, a little caddy that I keep. I got it at the Dollar Tree and I keep my end paper wraps in there, my straws and my bobby pins. So basically what I do is I take uh, an end wrap and I cut it in half and then I put it on each side of the hair and spritz it so that it, you know, it kind of sticks. The hair will stick to that. It's the same thing you do with uh, perming when you do perms. And then uh, I, I just roll it up nice and firm. And the first two I did forward because I wanted the swoop. And then the rest of it will be just like a standard roll up job. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of what it's called. It's like a, a standard hair set, um, roller set. That's what it's called, a standard roller set which is just going to be straight back down the back of the head all the way in the same direction. And then um, on the sides, it'll be down the sides, just straight down on both sides. And that will give me what I need to shape the hair and kind of give it what I'm looking for right now is to give it that the shape that I'm looking for, if it, for la I, I can't think of how to describe it, but I'm looking for the shape of the hair to be set in there. And the hair, this doll's hair is curlier than what I want. So that's why I'm using some big fat straws, which I think, but I'm not positive, I got from Walmart a long time ago. I don't remember where I get my straws because I've had them for so long. If I see a size that's interesting, I just go ahead and buy it and then you can cut them down. In fact, I've cut all my straws down so much that when I went to go do my Padme, it was really hard because all my straws were kind of too short. So I really need to go on a straw hunting marathon before they turn them all into paper because, you know, not that I'm against paper straws, but I do need the plastic ones for to do this. I'm sure I'd find something else. Like you can use perm rods. Um, you can use pipe cleaners, but you're going to get really curly hair of pipe cleaners. So you have to be careful. Like if I want to do the little curls around the face, I will use toothpicks. You know, uh, that's how I would do, you know, those little, uh, 
tendrils just around the face or at the nape of the neck, you could use, um, you can use straw. I mean, you can use toothpicks. Let me get that right. So the, I don't know if I said it already, but the reason why I sped this up was because it's kind of obvious what I'm doing, I guess. And there's no, there's no need for me to explain as I go, unless you just wanted to listen to me ramble on for hours because it's pretty self-explanatory as long as you put the the papers on there you spritz it with some water and then you pull it pretty tight and roll it up it should be fine and I know there's a lot of different ways you can do doll hair like I've seen them do it on YouTube but the reason why I do it this way is one it's safe for the hair and um, I'm not worried that I'm gonna damage the hair or burn the hair so that is one reason for sure because I've seen people do it with curling irons but also if you use a curling iron I've seen people do it with wet hair I'm, I mean I've, I've got friends who do it and I'm like mm, but how long is it gonna hold the hair you know you do a boil perm like this and you are reforming that plastic into a new shape and it will stay mostly it depends on the hair but this one you can tell already is going to stay good because the hair is already curly oh and i forgot to mention before i started this and the hair is probably a little tangly and that's my fault um i didn't put any conditioner in it because i didn't want anything to interfere with the reshaping of the curls and sometimes some the conditioner can do that you know it can make your curls a little droopy and I definitely didn't want droopy curls I wanted them to be fairly strong so I'm close to the end of rolling it up and then I, I have a teapot in my kitchen and I just I just let that boil and I pour it over avoiding the face of course don't 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 want to get anything on the repaint obviously probably be better to do this before you repaint but I just never end up doing that and um, the video that's coming up is a little snippet of boiling water is not my kitchen. <laughs> that's that's not mine. I just found it. But uh, I thought, you know, okay, that's a pot that's boiling water. <laughs> that's so I used it. Anyway, I used all the same roller size for this set. But um, like for the Padme doll that I did, I used a couple of different sizes for her hair because, you know, curls can be all different sizes, I guess. I used like medium and small for her on this one. Definitely large. I was thinking it would be really, really cool if I put a mirror on the other side so that you can see both sides of the hair. Sometimes my hand gets in the way while I'm doing it. And I just, I, as I was watching it, I was like, well, I mean, there's always a mirror when you do hair in a salon. So it'd be really cool if I just kind of put like maybe a little framed mirror behind so you can see both sides. You wouldn't need that for a repaint. There's my little boiling pot. It's not mine, but it's cute, isn't it? I thought it was cute. So I boiled her hair. And um, now I'm just going to take it all down. And what I was saying before was a mirror would be really cool. So I'm going to have to look into that, putting a mirror right there for hairstyling. Because I think it would be cool. Especially, it might be easier to be able to see both sides. I'll, I'll run an experiment on it and see how it works out. But uh, right now, all I want to do is just take it down and then I'm going to blow it dry. I have a lot of things on my desk. It, honestly, it doesn't look that messy in person, but I guess in this one little frame on the video, it seems messy, but it's really, it's, it's a controlled mess. It's a controlled mess. I just have a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting some styling cream in her hair. I love styling cream. I'll put down a link below which one I used. But I think pretty much any styling cream would be okay. You know, just hair styling cream. I like gel okay, um, but it's so stiff. And hairspray can be tricky because what if you get it on the doll? Now, I 
if you do use it, it's fine. I, I've used it, but you just have to make sure you cover all of the doll up before you spray it because if it gets on her face or body, it's going to look really shiny and then it's really hard to remove. So um, when you're blow drying your doll's hair, of course, you can see that I have it anchored down so that it's easier for me to, to, uh, to work with both hands. So I'm just using a brush, like a doll brush. And uh, the blow drying, you have to be really careful with the blow dryer because it is hot. And my this one doesn't really have a setting for a cooler setting. If it did, like warm, um, that's fine. I just make sure I keep a safe distance because you don't want to burn the plastic of the hair and it will, it will burn. So you have to be careful. Um, so I'm just going through each section. And one of the reasons why I like to blow dry the hair for an 80 style personally is because I want it to get puffy. I'm looking for a puffiness to the hair. You know, 80s hair was big. And while her hair wasn't ginormously huge, I just wanted to make sure that I gave it a lot of volume. So that's what I'm doing now. I put the styling cream in it and then I will use the styling cream again. I just need some coffee. So I'm just going through and this is where I noticed it was a little tangly, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because like I said, I'm going to put the styling cream after and then that just makes everything it just better. I guess the best thing I can say is while it looks like, oh, well, I'm directional blowing it dry because what I'm trying to do is, is add volume. So that's why I'm going, I'll go one side, then I'll flip it over and do the other side and then the back forward because I'm trying to make it bigger. That's the, that's the point of it. But, um, so I'm doing that and then what was I going to say? Oh, so it's going to look a hot mess, like a hot, hot mess, just huge and big and, you know, you probably would look at it and think, mm, uh, that's not what I want. This isn't, you know, make, make you a little nervous thinking about it. But as long as you don't burn the hair, you'll be fine. Just, you got to keep that heat away from it. So once it's dry, what I'll start doing is I will, I'll, I'll, I'm going to backcomb it, which is coming up in just a second. I'm still trying to add that volume in there with the blow dryer. I, I did this a lot with jean dolls because I was going for that glamour glamour picture look do you remember the glamour shots they used to do in the 80s I was going for that so this is like a glamour shot blow dry so smoothing out the hair after I have blown it dry and it looks like I just ruined the entire thing but I didn't I promise and now it's time to back comb the whole head well not really the whole head mostly the crown uh, you don't really need it to go all the way down, but this is where I'm building up a nice foundation for underneath the hair so that it'll hold the style for me and give it some more volume. Um, the, there's a nice base up underneath the hair when it's teased like this. I bumped, I bumped the camera. So I'm just, you don't need a special comb or anything. Just like a little rat tail comb is fine. I really need a new one that has like the metal at the end because um, it would be easier for me to be able to part the hair with that than this, than this old bent up one that I have. I don't, I just forget to buy those supplies. So now it's time to shape the hair and um, I'm just picking up a, a couple of different items trying to find the right thing because you don't want to tease it all and then come back and take it all out. So what you want to do is just like sort of gently start to comb over the top or brush over the top. A regular bristle brush works really good, but I couldn't find mine. So you just want to just smooth, smooth it out over the top while leaving the teasing underneath it. And then what I started to do was just take sections of hair at the bottom and just start to work through each one and smooth them out. So once I get all of that part smoothed out, now this seems it's, it's time consuming, isn't it? Like this is not a game. This is hair and you got to take your time with it. 
<laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm just shaping each section. And then once I'm done shaping each section back down, I'm going to go back around and reshape again a second time. Right now, basically, I'm just sort of starting to give myself the direction that I want the style to go in. And I'm trying to get some of those, uh, you know, tangles out of the bottom from the blow drying and whatnot. And uh, sort of, just, I'm just smoothing it out while keeping a shape underneath it. Then what I'll do, gosh, these little tiny brushes, aren't they funny? So I still have this other side to do. And I just sort of lift that top part of that hair out of my way so I can work up underneath it. And... Uh, I think I teased that up a little high. I didn't need to go with that quite that high, so I know I smoothed that down a little bit. And then I just pull the next section down and just work in sections and smooth and smooth and smooth while keeping the teasing underneath it. And then I'll go back and I'll start working each section of hair little by little with the styling cream because then that will smooth it out and make it look like real hair and it'll also hold the style so um i think i didn't finish this doll in one day the hairstyle i think i ran out of time so i'm thinking this might be day two right here we're coming into day two where i'm like coming back to it and um, i'm gonna go ahead and pin one side of the hair back a la Veronica Lake so all I do is I kind of smooth out the hair the, the way I want it it might take me several tries and then I just use those little tiny rubber bands they're not really rubber bands they're like some kind of bands that you use for like braids little tiny ones or you can use the ones that people use for braces <laughs> no for real I use those um, but I think I got these from, I want to say I got these from Walgreens, but you can get it from the Dollar Tree. You can get them anywhere. And I'm just using a little clear one. So I put it on the end there after I smooth it out and then I kind of twist it into the direction that I want. And then I just pin it down with, um, I'm using a little pearl pin here. That one bent, so I had to take it out. She has a really tough head. Barbie's heads are not this tough, so... Anyway, back to smoothing, more smoothing, more arranging. And uh, it'll be about time now for me to get the styling cream. So that I can start making the hair look like hair again. Instead of just look like a frizzy mess. And I don't want it to be that big either, you know. I, I want it to smooth down. I want it to have volume, but I don't want it to be like bulky. So this is where I'm going to just comb in and arrange each little curl section out with the styling cream. And, uh, and just bring that hair back to shiny life so that it looks more real. You know what I've done before? I don't do this very often, but I did do it with Khaleesi when I did her. Because her hair is white... And this doll, it's not a problem, but uh, on a white haired doll, it didn't look natural. The, the, the sarin hair didn't look natural. So I powdered it um, down so it looked more like real hair. I wouldn't do this with this one because I don't think it's necessary. I think her hair looks pretty real, so unnecessary. But um, with white hair, you know, it's very, it's too shiny. It's too shiny. So uh, that really helped to, to put a little bit of powder in it. Or you could use pan pastels as well. But I mean, I just used powder. So so you can kind of, I'm trying to show you. I did slowed it down a little bit, but it's, it's really hard to tell because my arm is in the way. That's why a mirror would really help. So you could see a little bit better, I think. But uh, little drops, little dollops of um, the styling cream just make such a difference. I don't know why I never used styling cream before. I started using it a couple of years ago. And I just love it. I think maybe, 
because I bought it. There's all kinds of stuff, though, that you can buy. If you just go look, any kind of hair styling stuff you can use on your dolls. Any, pretty much any kind. You just can't really dye your doll's hair with hair dye or perm it with hair perm because that's a whole different thing. And I used to know all of those, uh, all about the chemicals and how they reacted in the hair. I mean, I still kind of know, but it's, I'm not going to explain it. That's going to raspberry that one. And if anybody's a hairdresser here, then you would know that there's no way that those chemicals will work in, um, in plastic, which is basically what Sarah and hair is. It's plastic. Isn't that me? Isn't that amazing? They can make doll hair out of plastic and it looks cool. I like to use like, I really like the synthetic mohair. I think that's beautiful. It's very, it's kind of fine though. I don't know if I could reroute with it, but it's nice for wigs or, or, um, this would also work really great with, I'm trying to think of what it's called, like, like mohair, um, or alpaca hair. If you get alpaca hair, that's nice because it's much longer. Like mohair, I think you have to buy it with the skin, which is, oh no, poor baby. No, but like an alpaca, they just shave them, you know, so it's okay. <laughs> you know, they, they won't miss it. They, in fact, they can't function if they don't get shaved. They'll get too, too fat with hair. Anyway, now I'm just using... Um, some bobby pins to kind of try to shape the hair into place with the styling cream in it. And then I just tie it off and it depends on the hairstyle, what I use, but right now I'm just using some twine and, uh, making sure that it holds its style. And then I'll just leave that for a while, like overnight or whatever until the next day. I don't think I was that patient with this one, but, uh, that's because I wanted to do the video and um, I would just go back after the video and tie it back up and leave it. I still have a few things left to do with this doll. So she's not finished anyway. It's almost finished. So now I'm going to take it down and you can kind of see how I got my swoosh, my swoosh up at the top. Is that the word swoosh? And uh, then just gently untying the twine. It's not on there very tight and, and I, and I get the style that I want, but then I don't think it was quite holding in place yet. So, um, I put uh, a little hair net on top of it for the time being just to hold it down. You could do all kinds of different things. Like you could take a hair net once you were done. So put, put your, your bobby pins in the spot and I use, I use the paper so that I don't get any like bobby pin lines in the hair. Um, yeah, see, I wasn't happy with it. So I was still arranging it and I'll probably frog around with it some more, but, um, and then you could put a net over top of it or you could tie it down or you could put some tool around it and hold it down tight to the head. So if you really wanted to get it close to the head, you can co make it com more compact, but, and that's what I'm about to do with, uh, a little bit with the uh, hairnet. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's the end of this video. Um, I hope that it was super helpful. And um, I, I'm going to make some more. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.